go to Thorn Academy High School. And what I like to do is soccer and basketball and track. May 24th, 2012, my mother made me take a blood test when I turned 13. They called us in, my husband, myself, and, and Sarah, to speak to us. The first thing that she said to Ron and I is, her counts are so low, it's a miracle. If she was an adult right now, she wouldn't be alive. She said she either has aplastic anemia or she has leukemia. Fear was probably my initial reaction, thinking, well, I'm gonna lose my hair, or what's gonna happen? I had to get transfusions, and I had to get a surgery called bone marrow biopsy. It took them four surgeries to figure out that I had um, severe aplastic anemia that was turning into leukemia. I was in a lot of pain, and I had to take a lot of medication for it. They gave me a lot of Benadryl to help me sleep at night because I, had, I constantly had stomach aches and I constantly had pain in my stomach from chemotherapy. Sometimes like I would get pain in my mouth because another side effect was sores in your mouth, which causes you to not eat or drink because it just hurts when you touch it. It stings. It feels like a bee is like stinging your mouth. I was like crying and I was like, Mom, I can't eat. I was like, what's wrong with that? You know, I would say the medical field isn't adequately assessing people's pain and then being able to manage it. Unfortunately, while there's been recognition how important this needs to be, needs to be addressed, the medical community, I think, is still inadequately doing the job. And education is key to changing that. And while there are a lot of efforts directed towards that, I still don't think enough of the medical community out there feels comfortable in helping patients manage their pain. Every time they gave me medication, sometimes it wouldn't work to the point where days I would just crawl up in my bed and I couldn't move because the pain hurt so much. And they'd be like, well, we're just gonna have to drug you because the pain is just, we can't, we don't have that much medication for that. It was hard to like sit there and watch someone go through so much pain and not be able to take that pain away from them. I think that was the biggest challenge, is like I physically wanted to do something, and being at school, like I couldn't be there. I was contemplating life so much, like why am I doing this to myself, like I should be there for her, like that's what this should be about. She was getting some of the strongest chemo that a human being could possibly have, and the hardest thing I think I ever went through all this, even more so than the transplant or anything, was when she lost her hair. My hair was probably the most pain I felt is in my heart because the girl has her hair. That's kind of like her most important feature to me. And I was like, Mom, girls aren't supposed to be bald. I would cry about that every night for a really long time. And I still cry about it to this day because my hair was like my best feature to me. Well, they gave us a book, uh, Bone Marrow Transplant. It's like a 101 type thing. And I read it twice formulate a list of questions that uh, I needed answer on her behalf. Dr. Eva Guinan said, if you had a match, this would be the plan. Katie was clarified as her donor, and the way that Caitlin could put herself out there in that way, and the way that my dad could financially handle this, and the way that my mom was emotionally there every day, and the way that I was here in Maine taking care of what I needed to for them, that is like the huge bonding and chemistry point that we established along the way. Several times a day, we'd get up and walk that transplant unit because that's where she had to stay. I was determined I was not going to let my child lay in bed. I was not going to let her get depressed. Well, I think there's no disconnection between the mind and body. It's all one entity, the mind, body, soul, identity. All of that is interconnected. There's no way that there's a separation between um, how their body feels the sensations of pain and, and distress um, with how they feel emotionally. How they adapt to it is, is the variability between people. So I would get up every morning and try to get tutored, and I just try to do my homework, because I know that if I got out of bed and I motivated myself, I knew that I'd be out of the hospital sooner. Even though it might hurt now, when you can get back at it later in life, you can say that, hey, I won my battle, you can too. And I wish there was like different ways that you could help kids or there's like less painful ways to do it because I don't think any kid in the world deserves to go what I went through.